Lana, you know, we grew up as neighbours, mm. although if I may say so, you're a bit older than me. Yeah. Uh, okay, but Lakmahal, which, you know, we now look at this house I live in as a rather fun place, was nothing compared to Alfred House, which well. gave the place its name. And what was it like growing up in Alfred House with your father, Harold Pierce, who was this great patron of the arts, basically created the Lionel Went Theatre as Lionel Went had wanted it. Your mother, who was the sister of George Keat, and a family that was distinguished for what I would call cultural transitions, including, of course, your uncle Lakdasa, the first Anglican Bishop of Colombo, of Sri Lanka, rather. He was in Kurunagla. Mm -hmm. But tell me about your father and mother first. I think they created a, a, wonderfully, um, a wonderful atmosphere in which things happened and there was such a lot of life going along with such a variety of people coming and going and Alfred House was a space I think for a lot of people who came and shared their ideas and thoughts both on the sublime to the ridiculous you know and the fun things. I mean, like, for example, when my parents, have, have been, when they had their wedding anniversary celebrations every year, it was quite an occasion. Mm. And everyone came. There was Arthur and Langenberg, mm -hmm. that very colourful and wonderful person, uh, playing the piano and playing all sorts of mad songs and mm -hmm. so on. And then there was Jayanta Padmanabha. There would be absolute fun and nonsense. And in the course of which, a lot of wonderful things were also said, very memorable things. And they would live their past. I mean, they would sing all the songs, the music hall numbers. Right. Um, many of them had been to England University. Oh, yes. They all had been at Cambridge, right. or mostly Cambridge and Oxford. And uh, had been at Royal College or right. St. Thomas's, but mostly at Royal because there were people. So there was Len Van Gaisel right. and uh, uh, Jan Paulus and um, you know, a whole host of people. And each of them was quite, not a, you know, the tremendous personalities. Mm -hmm brimming with wonderful knowledge and experience and so on and insights, but also the ability to undress it, to be, be completely mad. Hmm. And they would sing songs like, I'll never forget, there was one particular a naughty sort of a music hall number which went, um, uh, I want somebody that love would not frighten, who would rehearse with me at Brighton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a whole, whole lot of sort of songs yeah. like that. Joan Modder, my aunt. Right. Uh, Uncle George would sometimes be there and contribute in his own sort of mm -hmm. crazy style. And I think that was very typical of the kind of social life and fun and profundity as well as the ridiculous. What you have been saying, of course, gives a very westernized view. The very culture much. was very western. And I think that's probably correct. But of course, the Fortity group, which had mm. so much support from Lionel Went and your father, mm is seen as also indigenizing art Correct. to some extent. Correct. How do you explain that paradox? Yes, I think Lionel Went is probably the most important um, and significant person of modern Sri Lanka, or modern Ceylon, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first person, really, in a sense, to, to start a kind of anti-colonial uh, movement. Mm -hmm. Um, which was all embracing in terms of the arts, in terms of culture, in terms of um, politics, you know, the, even pol the political, ideological. Um, because under the British sort of colonial regime, things were very straight-laced, you know, were very much controlled, very invisibly, of mm. course, in typically British right. colonial style, but definitely very straight-laced. And I think Lionel was able to critique and to facilitate people to come out with their, uh, with, with, what, with, with what was indigenous to them. Right. And I think the word indigenous in, in Lionel's way of thinking was not just simply inculturation, mm. but what was indigenous, the indigenous person that is within each other, right. within oneself, of being really oneself mm. with all the contradictions. Right. And I think when you talk about Western culture and so on and so forth, I think that over the whole period of, say, 400 years or 500 years, of the, from the Portuguese to the Dutch and the British and so on and so forth, there was a kind of multiple identities mm -hmm. that people could be both Sinhalese and Tamil and Berger and uh, 
the, the Christian and Buddhist and Hindu and so on and so forth, there was a peculiarly a, a new style of, of being that was developing. And um, I think Lionel was pr provided the kind of critique of getting people to be genuine. I think that the word mm. genuine was very important. It was not a kind of a style or a fad. Mm. It was not being singhala, right. because it was the right thing to do, as it mm. were. You know, so uh, when Lakdasa changed his name from Leslie, <laughs> right. you know, to Lakdasa, yeah. um, Lionel was amused. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, or when when Bertie Pieris uh, suddenly became Surya Sena, mm. they were real, they were Surya, they were Surya, real Surya Sena. You know, I mean, it, uh, uh, I remember my father and Lionel and people like that. You know, having a bit of a, a chortle. <clears throat> and they insisted on calling him Bertie Das. With, with a tongue in the cheek, very often. Bertie Pieris. And um, I think what Lionel was, and, and Lionel was there for that which was genuine and true and authentic. Is it, may I ask, I mean, one of the things that struck me is this wonderful collection of photographs, mm. but they're very homoerotic. I mean, was that one of the themes of that particular set, you know, Van Langenberg, etc.? Yeah, I think, yes. I, I do really think that in some ways they, pre, they, they, they predated, you know, they, they sort of, in a sense, were far beyond their time. Right. In that, I, I think, in the kind of cultural uh, milieu which Lionel and the vision that he had mm. uh, did also tend, in a sense, to free people to be themselves, right. you know, in terms of of, of their sexuality, of gender, and everything like that. And so some of his pictures and his photographs, and the way that he would encourage people to be, in a sense, to break through those, you know, that, the, mm. that sort of uh, re restrictiveness, to be truly authentic and truly, you know, genuinely, so even the erotic, mm. you know, I mean, people like George Keat. Right. I think, you know, George brought in that whole sort of erotic mm. rasa, as it were. Right. Lionel was against any kind of bogus, any kind of right. that which was not genuine. And uh, he would encourage people, even if, they, even if there was sort of a fallacy or even a mistake, mm. if it was a genuine something, an outpouring, a real query, mm. a real quest, Lionel would facilitate that. He would critique it, but he would also encourage. He was a wonderful teacher and a great mentor. Right. Um, do you think there was something Laurentian in that whole movement? You know, some things you've said have struck me as following on from the whole D.H. Oh, yes. Lawrence cult of the 20s and 30s. Yes. Oh, I, I, I do think so. Yeah. I think Lionel was open, and a lot of that genre of the, the, the people, you know, like Ivan Pieris and Darnia Gala and George and George Keat and Colette and um, the whole host of them, had, had, had the best of what do you call it, the, the Western um, writing and so on. And it wasn't just simply being because it was Western, mm -hmm. but I think it was because it was genuine good human literature. But of course one, I'm not saying it's an objection, but mm -hmm. I was reading very recently a couple of books on Tagore, especially in connection mm -hmm. with his 150th anniversary and his visit to Sri Lanka. And one of the arguments was that the people who went to Shantini Ketan who were totally involved in Bengali culture, Ananda Samarakun, for instance, mm. was mentioned, uh, adopted, say, a style of painting that, uh, in the view of, say, Chandragupta Tenura, who wrote this, uh, was more genuinely indigenous because the others were perhaps parasitic on the West, the 43 group. Mm. How do you look at that? And how would you compare that whole cult of Bengal, as it were, which took place at that time, and Bengal was a great flowering of literature and mm, culture indeed. and arts, and Tango was obviously a wonderful, mm. you know, innovative person. How, do you think there was competition, or were they complementary, those two strands? Yeah, my, my father particularly was very critical of people like Surya, right. and, you know, Chitrasena and people like that mm. later on, you know, who um, was, I think, uncritically, mm took Shantaniketan as the sort of mm. their spiritual home. Right. And they overlooked South India. Right, yeah. You see the whole Tamil, mm. uh, Dravidian culture, which is so much a part of, of Sri Lankan history. Mm. Mm. There was a kind, of a, a kind of, almost like a kind of a shame. Uh, you know, we are not Tamil, you know, we are Sinhalese. Yeah, right. And we are Indian, we are Western, we are Aryan. Oh, right, yes. Mm. You know? And and therefore, there wasn't the, the kind of dialogue mm. and openness to uh, another great center, uh, the Kalakshetra in Madras, for mm. instance. 
and, and, and Kerala, mm. you know, the great sort of Kathak and right. other, the, the famous dance, uh, dance and the cultural movements of there, mm. which was also very, very, you know, uh, which, 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 which was quite pa powerful and wonderful. Mm. And unfortunately, there was a tendency to deny that. But would that apply also to people like Sarat Chandra? Who ah, I now Sarat Chandra was, I think, uh, uh, quite unique in that whole mm. movement. In that Sarat Chandra was very genuine. I mean, for instance, his, his study of, um, you know, for instance, of the, of the folk music mm. of this country, his, um, his revival and his sort of, in a sense, development mm. of something like the Nadagam. Mm. And, and so on, and which he acknowledged had a large Tamil influence, mm. and also Portuguese. Mm. You know, um, the, the, the inf influence of the sort of, of, the, of the maritime areas of the Portuguese settlements and the Roman Catholic elements and so on. That, that um, Sarat Chandra was able to appreciate that mm. and not have a kind of a hang up of saying, oh, this is Tupai or that is foreign. You know, he was able to see that and draw and construct something new, but from the roots. Which, of course, was Tagore's essential vision, because Tagore does right. talk That's about I say. I think incorporation. To follow Tagore, mm. but not, in a sense, to take Tagore's findings, right. but rather his methodology. Yes, yes. which is what he wanted, yes. of course. And this is exactly the problem with the left movement in this country, right. which people like, my, like Lionel and, and, um, and my father and all, that there was a tendency to take Marx, right. Western Marx, the Marx of the 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, and his findings, his analysis of society and so on at that period, without using the methodology for here. Right, yes. So, you know, I mean, Marx was very, very poor in his criti a cri a critique of Asian religion, for instance. Mm. He knew nothing about it, really. And, uh, and he made some terrible, you know, terrible conclusions. Um, and, and, I, and I think that there was a need for, you know, real kind mm. of uh, ra grappling with our own history. Right. And our own sort of, uh, and, and the diversity of our own country. Mm. And I think uh, Lionel promoted uh, in his uh, support of the arts, of, of painting mm. and music and photography and also writing mm -hmm. uh, and, and his appreciation, for instance, of local dance. Mm -hmm. now, watching the Song of Ceylon, mm. you know, would indicate how, how Lionel's sort of warm um, appreciation and sort of sense of oneness you know, with the, with the folk, you know, with, the, with the people mm. in the village areas and so on and so forth. And he's very approving uh, uh, using of Robert Knox's, uh, what do you call it, uh, stories, mm. you know, in commenting on, right. you know, and he found that very genuine. Mm. If I would put it bluntly, I think that what Lionel was wanting very much was a genuinely critical, true appreciation of that which is local and, gen and, and, and authentic. Mm. So he loved the company of Surumba and Gunea and so on, the great folk dancers right. and drummers of the Candian areas. And he would, uh, in fact, there's a lovely story of uh, Lionel uh, reproving one of the Ratpattes. Right. Yes. This man was talking to Surumba in a very derogatory, mm. typical Radhala manner, right. To Tepi and so on mm. and so forth, and was very rude to him. Mm. And Lionel slapped him. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. And that. said to him, how dare you speak? to this man who is far above you. He's a true artist, mm. and you are an ignorant little pup. What was the Ratwatha reaction? Do we know? Or he got quite scarred, but he was, Lionel was a rather formidable person. He was a huge, big man. And when he got angry, he was quite, quite fearsome. Right. And he said, apologize to him immediately. And he did. And he did. Right. And he did. Now, this is a kind of you know, person that Lionel mm. was, who didn't suffer fools gladly because he felt that time was precious and, uh, and the struggle was, you know, had to be done. You know, now that you introduced politics, I think maybe what you say, said might explain one of the reasons why the left movement, having been so vibrant and, uh, let's say, inspiring for 20 years, then collapsed. Absolutely. And you think it was because of a lack of appreciation of the here and now in this country? Lionel tried very hard to promote critical writing. Mm. <clears throat> and he supported uh, P. Kandaya and uh, uh, Neela Kantan, right. you know, to set up a magazine called Kesari. Who are these magnificent communists of the Jaff now? That's Penin right, that's the right. Yeah. An, an Indologist as well. Right. And uh, he got, uh, he, uh, and, and it was a magazine that brought in mm. 
a lot of you know discussions on art, on culture, on uh, politics and ideology, ideological things as well. And he wanted people to write and to come out with their ideas and thoughts and to be self-critical as well as critical, mm -hmm. you know, and be open. Now, Lionel was an agnostic, you know, and a great, I, he loved Shaw mm -hmm. and had the red puckish sort of Shaw humor about, about Christianity and the church and so on. But there was also an affection. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the Bible he gave my brother, he had written on the cover to Paul and so on, etc. Uh, uh, always keep, remember that Christ was the first communist. Signed Lionel. You know, this is, this is typical of Lionel. Talking of the church, actually, you know, when you mentioned Lakdasa, mm. I think one of the most interesting aspects of Lakdasa, mm. your great uncle, and my, your uncle, and my uncle Lakshman Vikramasinghe, mm. who succeeded mm. each other as bishops of Kurunagla is the way they tried to transform the church of Ceylon, the Anglican church, into a church with local roots. Now, would mm. you think that was genuine? Was it a practicable proposition? Or was it doomed to failure? I think it was, uh, it was well meant mm -hmm. and very important. It was a very, very important uh, um, stance and, and a development. But I think what it lacked was, it was purely, it was superficial. Mm. It was like sort of, taking what was there and trying, in a sense, to modify it. Mm. But deep-rooted indigenous theology mm. of looking at Sri Lankan history and Buddhism and the local spiritualities as being, as in, in a sense, a part of our, the material for theologizing, mm. you know, um, was not really attended to. You don't think Lakshman was moving towards that towards Lakshman, the end of his life? Yes, Lakshman certainly was. Mm. Because he Lakshman, was Christianity moving eastward and that's so right. on. That's right. He's much more indigenous, if I may say so. I think one of the, one of the, one of the weaknesses I felt in, uh, in the enculturation or indigenization movement was that it took only one, um, one history and one culture uh, as more important than the others. It was very much focused on Kandyan Sinhala culture. So the cathedral at Kurunagala mm. was a replica, if you know, the octagon and right. so on and so forth. And it did not take into regard the Tamil Hindu um, element. Of course, one of the problems there is that Buddhism itself has completely ignored what I would call the synthesis of mm. cultures. That is part of Kandyan Buddhism. Absolutely. Because the whole point about the Gampula period and those absolutely fantastic temples mm -hmm. is that they're forgotten. No one studies them. They're still not properly studied yeah. in Sri Lanka. You know, that wonderful synthesis of two mm -hmm. religions. And in a sense, why didn't people like Keat or, or those artists, you know, who obviously concentrated so much on temple murals, actually include some of that? Because they were learned enough to know mm -hmm. that what had happened in Lanka Tilaka, what had happened in Gadladenia and Beke. That's right. I think, yes, I think there was a kind of, um, because of the, 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 the stance of our, of, our, of our culture, of our class, um, and the Christian you know, history, the colonial period, there was a kind of, a, if you like, a, a attack on Buddhism, or a sort of a, there was an effort to sort of make up. I see. And that our true identity could be because we, we really needed to be um, truly Sinhala. You think the denial of all the connections with South India, Correct. you know, the fact that so many of these groups had actually come from India as immigrants, the Nikas themselves, yes. uh, in the earlier part of the last millennium, mm. you think all that was ignored simply because they all felt they had to compensate for the British downgrading of Sinhala Buddhism? Yes, and also the, the, the failure to, to comprehend mm. that we are a uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a diversity of cultures, right. of, of ethnic, different ethnic groups, mm. with each of their own, their own histories, rich, rich histories, each with sort of, um, uh, with the right, in a sense, to be, and to be, be fostered. The only time that was really even mentioned, oddly enough, was by S.W. Adi Bandar Naik in the 1920s, mm. with the Korea, mm. who actually envisaged a, a, a future Lanka as being, as being a, a, 
a partnership of different ethnic communities. Right. Mm. You know, and a kind of thinking outside of the Westminster style, you know, mm -hmm. thing. Unfortunately, that was didn't didn't really ca carry the kind of weight and um, influence that it should have, and it had been sort of pushed aside. But that was the only time that the diversity of this country, that you know, that that which would have challenged a kind of mono-ethnic, monocultural, uh, majoritarian type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, people like Lana were beginning, in a sense, to question that. Mm. Let me just move slightly to one area that I find extremely sad, really, in that in this great efflorescence of art, whether we talk about painting or dance or uh, music, um, what we really missed out on completely was writing. Mm. And I think it's extraordinary that we have no good writing in English in the 30s, 40s and 50s. Mm. I think we still had the shadow of, of our colonial, you know, the, the, the shadow of, you know, of, of that over us, mm -hmm. where, you know, literature meant... But there were people, I think, like Siri Bordhana, you know, was Reggie. No, Reggie, right. Was Reggie, who I think, you know, in a sense, began, in a sense, to widen no, they were critics, but they, he yeah. didn't start writing no, in no, the no, 80s no. or 90s. I you had Jinnada Sevijayatunga, mm. and that's about it. I mean, he, he's good, but uh, it was limited yeah. form. But do you think that, uh, now this is a question I would like to throw, because I think you're much more conversant with mm. of ri the writing of the English in this country. Mm. Now, as in India, there's been a, a great amount of, I mean, Art mm. Narayan and many other people like that. Um, aren't there, isn't there any new writing going on in this country? I mean, surely... Uh, with the Gratian Prize and the... Well, I have to admit that I think there was a great efflorescence in the 70s and 80s. And I think we also did not appreciate enough people like Punyaganti Vijanaka, who did a fantastic job of using English to talk about Sri Lanka in all its variety. But then you had people like Gina Rasanayaka, mm. Richard mm. de Souza, oh, yes. uh, you know, really good writers. Uh, but all that seems to have died down, and I find the more recent writing, you know, I've been editing anthologies of poetry and short stories. And the prose is better, but the poetry seems to me to be dead again. Mm -hmm. And in that context, if I might again go back to the 40s, I find the type of poetry that George Green wrote unreadable. I mean, it's just uh, flatulence. With this, uh, Lionel was very scorching. When George came up with his poems, he listened very politely and he said, George, concentrate on painting. <laughs> I mean, one thing that's actually struck me, though, about all the writing is that there is no celebration of place. Mm. And perhaps that's also true of a lot of the, the poetry. Mm. You know, our, our, our landscape painting is very limited. Very limited. You know, there's... Uh, concentration on line and colour and people. But there's no celebration of what, to my mind, is actually the greatest compass of beauty in the world in such a small space. Mm. You know, I'm sure there are other countries that are more beautiful, but you don't find such beauty. And places, the only writer in English who has actually celebrated place, ironically, is Anne Runnison. Yeah. She has a wonderful collection of poems on places like Polonnaru and Seagir. Absolutely. Mm. And there's no, you know, evocation of the atmosphere of Anuradhapura. Mm. None of that is there. I mean, to me, was it part of the problem of the 30s that mm. there was no sense of affection, if you like, for the creative countryside? Mm. I agree with you. And I think, uh, I wonder how you would assess, uh, you know, English writers, you know, like uh, John Still, Leonard Wolf, you know, who had a much greater, almost a warm affection, mm. you know, about the gunner, you know, of writing about a place like that, about the forest and about the people and so on and so forth. And I think it's strange how people like John Still and uh, Leonard Wolf and others, people like that, and even H. W. Parker in his mm. own sort of style, had a had a much Interestingly, much greater appreciation. What I meant was that uh, two things. One is the visuals, the painters, mm. and the photographers 
don't do enough yeah. for me for place on its own and historical place, yes. atmospheric place. Right. And the uh, second is that the writers were, let us say, um, you know, wrote uh, descriptions, non-fiction, but the creation through fiction of a sense of place and people within that place mm. hasn't worked in Sri Lanka. No, no, it hasn't. It hasn't. No. I wonder how, how would you compare with um, Indian writing? Well, I think in India you have much more. You mm. have both Raja Rao, you have Muk Rajanand, you know, in oh, that early period. Uh, there's a great sense of celebration of place and people. Mm. And we are missing on that. As I said, Vijayatunga tried it in uh, what is not a novel, but then his later writing didn't really take mm. on from that. Mm. And that is something that, because, you know, I absolutely love all the arts that you've described. But to me, the art that analyzes best is the written word. Yeah, and I, Sri Lanka I, hasn't had that. No, sadly, that is sadly true. I think we've, that we, this is a conclusion we've got to come to, and I think we do have to do a lot of, I think, heart search and, and looking around as to why we haven't still had that kind of inspiration, mm. you know, for a person really to sort of express that. Um, I wonder if even, I mean, in, uh, using, I mean, in singular writing, mm. I'm not con really true con properly conversant with uh, singular, modern singular literature, right. but there have been some excellent novels, ex ex some good ones, I believe. Is it because our whole English-speaking society was also far too obsessed with the town? I think so. Mm. Oh, I, I definitely think so. I mean, there were the rare exceptions of people like Kenneman, Father right. Herbert Kenneman, right. who went and you know, lived there and loved the land and loved the people. But unfortunately, I don't know uh, why it is, but what are the sort of inhibitive things or the sort of restraints that have prevented our people from somehow you know, creating something totally new? As I said, I think perhaps that great efflorescence was cut short because of political currents that drove us all in nationalistic ways. So, and Lana, when dying, was of course a, a tragedy. Uh, can I ask, you know, as we both get older, you know, there's a lovely line of Anne Rana Singh has about a friend of hers who died in the concentration camps, and she says, there's no memory except my own, mm. and soon there will be no memory. I agree. Do you have visual evidence, photographs, that perhaps we should maybe republish in a whole to try to recreate something of those really exciting days. Well, I would have to agree with, with Anne. Right. Because my father, I love him, and love him still, um, was infuriating because he would not allow any kind of uh, photographs and that kind of thing, no memorabilia. Uh, he would always say when we had said, pressed him, uh, jokingly, we said, we're going to put up a big photograph of you at the land event. He said, no, not on your life, no. He said, I will come and haunt you if you do that. He said, I want to tiptoe out, leaving no, no footprints in the sands of time. <laughs> so alas, I, I have my memories, and that's about all I can offer. <laughs>